For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. If you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you have everlasting life. The gospel of Christ, Jesus is God. He was manifest in the flesh, in his Son, Jesus Christ, the man, Christ Jesus. He came unto his own people, came unto his own, but his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believed that believe on his name. And his name is Jesus. It's the name which is above every name. It's the only name that can save. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Jesus Christ, he came into his own people, and they killed him. Uh, the Jews, they killed Jesus Christ. His death the man Jesus Christ, his death was the propitiation for the sins of the world. He died for the sins of the world, all sins for all men, for all time. And after he died on the cross, they took his body down from the cross, from the tree, and they buried him in a sepulcher. But God raised him from the dead on the third day, and he was seen by alive by his witnesses. Many witnesses saw Jesus Christ risen alive after he died. And he was raised by the power of God. And if you believe on that gospel, it was for the forgiveness of sins. And if you believe on that, you have everlasting life. If you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, he did the work. He finished the work that he came to do. And uh, you must believe on his work, not your own work, to go to heaven. So the gift is yours to receive if you believe it with your heart. That's what you must do to be saved from the wrath of God, from the lake of fire. And to... to receive the free gift of eternal life and forgiveness of sin something you can never work for you can never be good enough yourself in your own righteousness to go to heaven because all have sinned scripture says in romans all have sinned and come short of the glory of god there is none righteous as it is written there is none righteous no not one there is none that understandeth there is none that seeketh after god But it's not our righteousness that gets us into heaven. It's the righteousness of God, which is imputed to the believer in Jesus. Uh, so you cannot get to heaven by being a good person, your own goodness, or your own not sinning, but your own being good. Because therefore, by the deeds of the law, so if you're not stealing, if you're not killing, you know, if you're keeping trying to keep the law to go to heaven, you're trying to enter in another way. But there is no other way to heaven then through Jesus and his work that he did for us already. It is finished, he said, when he was on the cross. The work is finished. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So he's the way. He's not one of many ways. He's the way. He's the only way to heaven, the only way to the Father. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, shall there, there shall no flesh be justified in his sights. By the deeds of law for by the law is the knowledge of sin but now the righteousness of god without the law is manifested being witnessed by the law and the prophets even the righteousness of god which is by faith of jesus christ unto all and upon all them that believe for there is no difference for all have sinned and come short of the glory of god so we've all also have sinned but when you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you receive God's righteousness. When you believe that gospel of Christ and believe on his name, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, being justified freely by the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Uh, um, even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, unto all and upon all them that believe for there is no difference for all have sinned and come short of the glory of god being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in christ jesus whom god hath sent forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare not our righteousness not your own good works but to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past through the forbearance of god to declare i say at this time not our own righteousnesses, not my own righteousness, but his righteousness. To declare, I say at this time, his righteousness, that we that he might be just and the justifier 
of him that does what? Of him which believeth in Jesus. So that's what you must do is to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to receive the free gift of eternal life, forgiveness of sins. You receive God's own righteousness because his spirit will dwell with you. You'll be a new creature. You'll be born again. Where is boasting then? It is excluded. I, I don't have anything I can boast in for my own salvation. I can only boast in Jesus and the work he's done for me, the one we, we preach. By what law of works? Nay, it's not by the works of the law. By the works of the law shall no flesh be justified, but by the law of faith, by the faith of, not our faith, but the faith of Jesus Christ. By faith of Jesus Christ. Therefore, we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. So it's not about keeping the law. You cannot keep the law to go to heaven. It's not about not sinning. You cannot go to heaven based on yourself not sinning or keeping the law. Because all have sinned. But you can go to heaven if you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and the work he's done for you, the gospel. He died for your sins. God was manifest in the flesh, came into his own people. His own people killed the man, Jesus Christ, on the cross. He died for the sins of the world, Jesus Christ. After he died, they took his body down from the tree and they buried him in a sepulcher. But God raised him from the dead on the third day, and he was seen by his witnesses, alive. Many witnesses saw him, alive after God rose him from the dead. And it was done for the forgiveness of sins. Is he the God of the Jews only? Is he not also of the Gentiles? Yes, of the Gentiles also. Seeing it is one God which shall justify the circumcision by faith. So God is the one doing the justifying here. He's the just. He's the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. We cannot justify ourselves to be right with God. God is the judge. Seeing it is one God which shall justify the circumcision by faith and uncircumcision through faith, the faith of Jesus Christ. Do we then make void the law through faith? God forbid, yea, we establish the law. What shall we say then that Abraham our father as pertaining to the flesh hath found? For if Abraham were justified by works, he hath were up to glory, but not before God. For what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God. It's the same thing we must do is to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. To believe the gospel of Christ. God's word. For what saith the scripture, Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Now to him that worketh, so if you're trying to do good works, or you're trying to keep the works of the law to go to heaven. Now to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. So if you're trying to do good works, or keep the law, or do good, good things, or be a good person to go to heaven... You're trying to buy your way in. You're trying to buy, a st buy your way into heaven with your good works because it's no longer of grace. It's no longer a gift that way. You're trying to get in another way than what God says in his word. The only way is through Jesus. Now to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. So if you're trying to work your way to heaven, you're trying to get in by debt. You're trying to purchase your, your way in based on your good works. But the scriptures in Ephesians, it says, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So it's, it's, for, it's a gift. It's, a completely, it's completely a gift. You can never work for it. If you're trying to work to go to heaven, trying to do works, good works, good deeds, keeping the law, you're trying, it's a debt. Like God would owe you something for that. It's It doesn't work that way. You can't get into heaven that way. It's only by grace. And you can receive the free gift by believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. That's all you must do. In the book of Acts, it says, And brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved and thy house. But to him that worketh not, so that's me and any other brethren that I know, in the Lord, but to him that worketh not, so I'm not trying to do good works to go to heaven, I know I can't get in that way. I'm working not to go to heaven. I'm not working trying to do good works to go to heaven. But to him that worketh not, but does what? But believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly. His faith is counted for righteousness. So it's not your own righteousness. 
It's the righteousness of God. We saw that in Romans 3. You receive it by believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. Even as David also described it, the blessedness of the man unto whom God imputeth righteousness without works. So again, it's the righteousness comes from God. It's not your own. It comes from God. And it's not by works or, or with works. Or it's not, yeah, it's not, not through works, your works, that is. It's through the, the one work, the, the finished work of Jesus Christ. God imputeth righteousness without works, not by your works, saying, blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven. That's how you get your iniquities forgiven. You believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. So that's me. Because I have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ to receive the free gift of eternal salvation and forgiveness of sins. I'm not trying to get in another way. I'm not trying to go to heaven based on my good deeds, or my good works, or my own righteousness. I know those things can't get me in. I heard the gospel, so that then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. And I believe with my heart unto salvation. And you can do that too. That's all you must do is believe with your heart on the Lord Jesus Christ, the gospel of Christ, saying, Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. Come with this blessedness then upon the circumcision only or upon the uncircumcision also. For we say that faith was reckoned to Abraham for righteousness. How then was it reckoned when he was in circumcision? Again, that's another work of the law. Uh, not our law today, but in the scriptures in the Old Testament, for sure. That was uh, one of their laws. When he was in, in circumcision or in uncircumcision. Not in circumcision, but in uncircumcision. So not in his works, but in uncircumcision. And he received the sign of circumcision, the seal of the righteousness of the faith, which he had yet being uncircumcised, this is not, apart from works, not with works, that he might be the father of all them that do what? That believe. Though they be not circumcised, that righteousness might be imputed unto them also. So we're not, we're not here to do good. We cannot do good works to go to heaven. We cannot do any works to go to heaven. And the father of circumcision to them that are not the circumcision only, but who also walk in the steps of that faith of our father Abraham, which he had yet being uncircumcised, again, uh, apart from works. For the promise that he should be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to the, his seed through the law. It's not it's, The promise was not through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. For if... They which are of the law be heirs, I was trying to keep the law to go to heaven. If they be heirs of the promise of God that he promised Abraham and in the promise of eternal salvation today, if, if they which are of the law be heirs, faith is made void. It's no longer a faith anymore. Either it's by either it works, it's either by works or it's by by uh by grace. For if they which and it's by grace, it's not by works. For if they which are of the law be heirs, faith is made void, and the promise made of none effect, because the law worketh wrath. For where no law is, there is no transgression. The believer in Jesus Christ is actually free from the law of sin and death. Therefore, it is of faith that it might be by grace. Salvation is by grace. It's of faith. To the end, the promise might be sure to all the seed. So you can know for sure that you have eternal life if you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. If you believe that gospel in, in 1 John, it says, These things write it unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the only begotten Son of God. So you may know that you have eternal life. The promise is, may, may be sure to all the seed, not to, not to that only which is of the law, but to also, that also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations, before him whom he believed, even God, who quickeneth the dead, and calleth those things which be not as though they were, who against hope believed in hope, that he might become the father of many nations, according to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. And being not yet, and being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead when he was at, uh, when he was about an hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God, 
and being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was also able to perform. And therefore, for this reason, and therefore it was imputed unto him, imputed to him for righteousness. Abraham believed God. That's what we must do, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to receive the free gift of eternal life and salvation, uh, and eternal salvation and forgiveness of sins. Now, it was not written for his sake alone. It's not just for Abraham here that it was imputed to him, but for us also to whom it shall be imputed. This is the righteousness of God. It shall be imputed to you if you believe on him that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead. If you believe the gospel of Christ, if we believe on him that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification, Jesus Christ was delivered for our offenses. It wasn't for his own offenses. He was a perfect man. He never sinned. He never, he, I mean, he kept the law perfectly. So he never did anything wrong. He always did what pleased the Father. And he was delivered, his own people, the Jews, delivered him unto Pilate. He was delivered to be slain. Though they found no cause of death in him, yet desired they Pilate that he should be slain. And he was delivered unto Pilate, and he was killed by his own people. But it was not for anything he did wrong, because he did no wrong. He was made sin who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. So he knew no sin. He never sinned. He was perfect man. But he was delivered for our offenses. He was delivered for everything I ever did wrong, all my sins. And not just me, not our sins, oh, not just me, but for the sins of the whole world. He's a propiti propitiation for our sins and not for ours only, but for the sins of the whole world. So he died for the sins of the whole world and was raised again for our justification. God raised him from the dead for our justification. That's how we're justified. It was his work, the work of Jesus Christ. And we believe on it to be saved. We believe on him to be saved in his name, Jesus. It's the only name that saves. It's the name above every name. There is no other name under heaven. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. Therefore, being justified by faith, not by our works, not by the deeds of the law, not by keeping the law or not sinning, therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. And I have peace with God. I know for sure that I'm saved and that I'll go to heaven. I have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand. I know it's by grace. It's not my works. And rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Hey, Gil, what's happening, brother? Michael, Michael, how you doing? <laughs> uh, speed. <laughs> I don't mean to interrupt. I'll just I can't, I can't uh, hear you there. I'm not sure if it's on. Can you hear I'll me? I'll keep reading, though. You hear me now? Michael? Hello, hello? Yeah, I can't, can't hear anything coming through. I'll just keep reading. But uh, if I do hear you, I'll, I'll pause for sure. Uh, and not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patience experience, and experience hope. This is uh, to the church here. Hey, Gil, okay, that again, right? Is that better now? Can you hear me now? I miss my speakers. Let me see. Let me try one thing here. Test, 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 test. Uh... Yeah, test, probably. Test, 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 yeah. Test. Can hear you now. Yeah. If you can hear me and come back, it was just my own speakers there. So, yeah, you could have been heard on this video the whole time. It was just my speakers only. So, if you come back, um, I can definitely hear you now. And not only. Oh. Okay, yeah, right. can, you, can hear you now. Third time to charm. Yeah, it's my, my speakers. My bad. Oh, okay. <laughs> I mean, to interrupt. I saw you live. I just want to support and get that gospel in one time. Amen. Uh, believe that Jesus is God that was manifest in the flesh. He came unto his own, his own received him not. He died on the cross for the sins of the world. He was buried, risen on the third day, and seen alive. So I believe on the name Jesus. 
I believe on the Lord Jesus. I just believe on Jesus. Jesus is my Savior. Amen, brother. Yeah. I say so, you know, it's just preaching that gospel too. And, you know, it's, uh, you hear Brother Kale there, it's uh, not, not boasting on himself. He's not boasting on his works. He's not saying he's going to go to heaven because he's, you know, a good person or done good deeds or anything like that. He's not boasting. He's not saying he's going to keep the law to go to heaven. He says, uh, go to heaven because of the Lord Jesus Christ. He believes on the Lord Jesus Christ, the gospel of Christ. Jesus is God and he's manifest in the flesh, came into his own, his own received him not. Uh, his own people killed the Lord Jesus, uh, Jesus Christ, the man Christ Jesus. He died for this. Death was the propitiation for the sins of the world. He died for the sins of the whole world. And uh, they took his body. After he died on the cross, they, they took his body down from the tree. They buried him in a sepulcher. God raised him from the dead on the third day. And he was seen by his witnesses after that alive. And it was all done for the forgiveness of sins. So, Gail, there's not boasting on himself, boasting on the Lord Jesus Christ. We're preaching that gospel. Same that Paul preached. And it's a, it's a common salvation. We, there's only one way to heaven. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So we preach Jesus. We preach him uh, boldly. We you know it's this is the only way to heaven. So we're just getting the word out. And uh, if you're out there listening or, or watching, if we invite you to join um, the study, there's a link out there. If you want to click the link and uh, join the study, if you have any questions or. Um, any scriptures you want, you know, we want us to look at. Uh, but that's what we're preaching. It's not uh, we're not boasting on ourselves. We're, we're preaching the Lord Jesus Christ. And we'll keep it. Amen. And this is so needed. You know, people won't go back and watch it, even if they're not watching live. Mm. But uh, the fact that we have brethren that are reading straight from the Word of God, they're willing to answer questions straight from the Word of God, and then preach the true gospel. I mean, this is this is amazing. So I appreciate it, that you're doing this and every Sunday, same time. So it allows people an opportunity to chime in. And so uh, keep keep it going, brother. Amen. Thanks, Gil. Yeah, uh, we've got other brethren preaching as well. You know, other studies happening too. All uh, brethren are uh, getting the word out there. And uh, yeah, if anybody's watching this after the fact, it doesn't have to be this live video, but if you want to join, just uh, find the link. There's a YouTube channel up. There's, there's several YouTube channels here. Uh, with the brethren here and um, a Facebook uh, link up on Facebook, um, different places to get the word out there. Uh, but yeah, they made a good, great point about, we just go by the word of God. You know, it's not, um, we're not uh, making up our own doctrine here. You know, you hear a lot of men in the world, they, you know, they take the scriptures, but they, they add to them and they take away from them and they, they put their own uh, twists and things and, and their own words and they, and they lead people astray. And, uh, but we go right to the scriptures and we say, yea, let God be true, but every man a liar. Uh, that, you know, that, that, sorry, yea, let God be true, but every man a liar, that ye may be justified in that, that ye might be justified in thy sayings and mightest overcome when thou art judged. So we only go by the word of God. Jesus said, uh, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. We believe the word of God and the scriptures we have here is the truth. And, uh, we go by it so it's we're not here to uh to make things up or to add our own you know doctrines we're just only going by the scriptures so uh it's that much more of a reason to come join a study that's for sure uh to hear the truth the truth in jesus jesus is the truth you know i was just reading through romans Amen. and i you know, just oh that's a good book yeah. yeah. What chapter in Romans five? Are you reading uh, each chapter? We I just started in three. I read four and five, but I was sort of uh, just preaching the gospel along through because Romans three, four, five. I think. Yeah, I'm preaching teaching about. as you're going. Yeah, the righteousness. I'm gonna step out there. My my okay. son is about to play a baseball game. I don't know if you can see. Okay. So, yeah. So yeah. Yeah, I want to. Yeah, Kais, little little Kais, and then Kari's got basketball this afternoon. Uh, oh. Got a championship game, so oh, nice. probably they play well and see, you know, see if they get the victory. If not, you know, there's always tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> you know? You're gonna go Kais, go but Kari. all right, man. Hey, just appreciate it. I'll be listening in. Okay, Kill. Nice, uh, glad to join there. Good to see you. 
Yeah, so I'll just pick up where I was here in Romans 5. So I'm just reading through. I was talking about how, uh, you know, it's not our righteousness to go to heaven by. It's the righteousness, righteousness of God, which is imputed to the believer, to him that believeth in Jesus. Uh, it's it's God's righteousness, right? You can't go to heaven based on your works. Um, we're justified by faith, through you know, by grace through faith is, is what, for by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So again, you heard Brother Kale there, you know, he was he was boasting in Jesus only, not his, not himself, right? A lot of people you ask, how, why will we go to heaven? Or some people, a lot of people are just not sure. But I shared scriptures that, you know, in First John, I didn't look at it, but I, I quoted it. But in First John, it says here, these things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. So a lot of people, they, they're not sure if they go to heaven, or if they have eternal life, or if their sins can be forgiven. But you can know for sure. You can be sure of the promise. And all you must do to receive it is to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. It sounds really easy, right? Well, it is easy. Jesus said, my, my way is uh, easy. My yoke is light. Um, Come unto me, all ye that are, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. Hey, Kundert, what's happening, brother? How are we doing? How are we doing? Good. Kale was just here a moment ago. He's uh, His boys are uh, playing sports today. Uh, we'll have a championship game. and So he was just here a moment ago. And I was just reading through and preaching the gospel and reading, sharing some scriptures. How, how are you doing today? Doing good. Just finishing up my own website. I want to know your thoughts, too, once it's finished. Get your, your feedback, and then I'm, uh, I'm going to send it to a developer. But um, yeah, sure. yeah. I, I didn't get the notification. Usually I'm uh, on time, but sorry for that. Oh, um, no worries at all. And then I believe the gospel, man, <clears throat> that Jesus is God manifest in the flesh, that he came unto his own and his own received him not. His own people condemned him, even though he was innocent. They killed him out of envy. And he died on the cross for the sins of the world. He was buried in the sepulcher. But he rose on the third day. And he was seen alive by his witnesses. That's what I believe. It says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So, just believe in Jesus. And you can have everlasting life present tense i already have it michael has it because we're sons of god by believing in jesus not because we repented or because we're good um or we follow the law no it's because we believe on the lord jesus christ so i uh if you hear this for the first time just believe it amen Hey, Amen. And then and, um, I quoted it earlier. I just wanted to share it on the screen here as well. In the book of Acts where it says, And brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved in thy house. So it really is that, um, you know, simple to receive the free gift. It's just to, you, that's what you must do, is to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, the gospel that, you know, we're preaching to Jesus himself, his work that he did for us. Uh, God is manifest in the flesh. He came into his own people. His own received him not. They, his own people killed Jesus Christ, the man, Christ Jesus. He came in uh, after he died on the cross. You know, they took his body down. They buried him in a sepulcher. But God rose him from the dead on the third day. And after that, he was seen by his witnesses. Uh, Rejoice evermore. It's done for the forgiveness of sins. And if you just believe it with your heart and believe on his name, his name is the only name that saves uh don't believe on yourself. You, you can't go into he you can't get to heaven any other way. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So we just preach the same thing. Kundert is preaching the same thing. You heard it, Kale, earlier on the video uh, or the recording. Is um, we're not boasting in ourselves. We're not boasting in our works, good works. We're not uh, saying we can do good works to go to heaven because we know we can't. 
And God's word is clear, you know, his, his word is the truth. So a lot of men out there are teaching falsely and they're leading people astray. And the whole time we're here just saying, yea, let God be true, but every man a liar, as it is written, that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings and mightest overcome when thou art judged. So we only go by the scriptures. Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. So we go right to the scriptures, which is the truth, God's word. And uh, we don't try not to lean on unto our own understanding. He said, uh, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding and all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. So that's what we do here. If you want to join a study, you know, uh, find, we'll have a link somewhere. I'm sure you can join our future study. Um, but yeah, amen. We're just preaching that same gospel Paul preached. Jesus sent Paul with that gospel. Um, and Paul preached and uh, many heard and believed and were saved because they believed the gospel and they believed the Lord Jesus Christ. There's no other way. Yeah, I was just going through some scriptures in Romans, just starting Romans 3, 4, 5, and just kind of preaching the gospel along the way. A lot of those books, chapters in Romans there are talking about how it's not our righteousness, it's God's righteousness imputed to the believer. It's not of works, it's of faith. You know, the faith of Jesus Christ, not our faith. Um, what we must do is to believe on Jesus to be saved, Jesus Christ, the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, that's basically where I was when you came in, brother. Yeah, just, just sharing scriptures and preaching uh, the gospel there. Mm -hmm. A bit earlier this week, I was looking at some of the scriptures where all these mighty men, like Abraham and Solomon, David, Job, they were all just saying, you know, we're, we're nothing more than than ashes and and what else and dust, dust, dust and ashes. Yeah, or you know. It's like, man, that's true. And if these mighty men said it, then what am I? <laughs> it's like, man. I mean, there's so many examples in scripture where it was um, like, if it's David versus Goliath, right? Like David was the, and how David was chosen among all his brethren, right? They didn't even think of David to begin with. When, when is it, um, was it Saul went? It's, no, it wasn't Saul. It must have been, was it Saul? Yeah. And then, um, he went to all David's brethren first. And they were all, you know, strong men, and they didn't even think of David. David was out with the sheep. The uh, prophet went. Saul, Saul didn't go. Wasn't Saul the prophet, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think that's Samuel, right? Samuel. Was Samuel. Yeah. I'm stand corrected. Yeah, that's for sure. If not on his stature, right? The God looketh on the heart. Um. Just going to quickly get that here. But there's so many uh, examples in scripture where it wasn't um, the might, the man's might himself, and it wasn't his size. Like Goliath was uh, like a giant, wasn't he? Like uh, they said how tall he was in cubits or how much, how bigger he was compared to everybody else. Um, and he had like a, he's like a war man, right? Like he wasn't, David was a, like a, uh, like a shepherd, right? He's keeping the, the flock and everything. But, you know, Goliath was like a man of war and he had like armor and everything. And David had, you know, like a slingshot, right? Or a sling and a, and a stone. So, and David won because he knew God was with him. I think it says in that scripture too, right? Like David knew. He even told, he's so bold to, to Goliath's face. He just knew he'd win. This big man, right? This man of war. Because uh, God was with him. I like oh, that scripture. Um, a he champion. Said, yeah. The light of a champion. Okay. I didn't know that. Champion of war, right? Like he, he fought a lot. Um, and his height was six cubits in a span. There were, and there was sent out a champion out of the camp of the Philistines named Goliath of Gath, whose height was six cubits and a span. And he had a helmet of brass upon his head. Like David didn't have a helmet of brass when he showed up and was armed with a coat of mail. 
And the weight of the coat was 5,000 shekels of brass, so this big, heavy brass mail coat. And he had greaves of brass upon his legs, all this armor he's got, like physical armor he's got on, and a target of brass between his shoulders. And the staff of his spear was like the weaver's beam. And his spear's head weighted 600 shekels of iron, and one bearing a shield went before him. And he stood and cried unto the armies of Israel and said unto them, Why are ye come out to set your battle in array? Am I not a Philistine and ye servants to Saul? Choose you, choose you a man for you and let him come to, down to me. If he be able to fight with me and to kill me, then will we be your servants. But if I prevail against him and kill him, then shall ye be our servants and serve us. And the Philistine said, I defy the armies of Israel this day. Give me a man that we may fight together. And when Saul, when Saul and all Israel heard the, those words of the Philistine, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. Now David was the son of that Ephrathite of Bethlehem, Judah, whose name was Jesse, and he had eight sons. And the man went among men for an old man in the days of Saul. And the three eldest sons of Jesse went and followed Saul to the battle. And the names of his three sons that went to the battle were Eliab, the firstborn, and next unto him Abinadab, and the third Shema. And David was the youngest. So it's not like he was the oldest, and like, but he was the youngest. And the three eldest followed Saul. But David went in return from Saul to feed his father's sheep at Bethlehem. And the Philistine drew near morning and evening and presented himself forty days. And Jesse said unto him, and Jesse said unto David his son, Take now for thy brethren an ephah of this parched corn and these ten loaves, and run to the camp to thy brethren, and carry these ten cheeses unto the captain of their thousand, and look how thy brethren fare, and take their pledge. Now Saul and they and all the men of Israel were in the valley of Elah, fighting with the Philistines. And David rose up early in the morning and left the sheep with the keeper, and took and went as Jesse had commanded him. And he came to the tr trench, and the host was going forth to the fight and shouted for the battle. For Israel and the Philistines had put the battle in array, army against army. And David left his carriage in the hand of the keeper of the carriage and ran into the army and came and saluted his brethren. And as he talked with them, behold, there came up the champion, the Philistine of Gath, Goliath by name, out of the armies of the Philistines and spake according to the same words. And David heard them. And all the men of Israel, when they saw the man, fled from him and were so afraid. All the men were afraid of, of uh, Goliath. And the men of Israel said, Have ye seen this man that has come up? Surely to defy Israel is he come up. And it shall be that the man who killeth him, the king will enrich him with great riches and give him his daughter and make his father's house free in Israel. And David spake to the man that men that stood by him, saying, What shall be done to the, the man that killeth this Philistine and taketh away the reproach from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? And the people answered him after this manner, saying, So shall it be done to the man that killeth him. And Eliab, the, the eldest brother, brother, heard when he spake unto the men. And Eliab's anger was kindled against David, and he said, Why camest thou down hither? And with whom hast thou left those few sheep's, sheep in the wilderness? I know thy pride and the naughtiness of thine heart, for thou art come down that thou mightest see the battle. So they thought he was there to see the battle. And David said, What have I now done? Is there not a cause? And he turned from him toward another and spake after the same manner. And the people answered him again after the former manner. And when the words were heard which David spake, he rehearsed them before Saul, and he sent for him. And David said to Saul, Let no man's heart fail because of him. Thy servant will go and fight with this Philistine. So David's like volunteering to go fight against Goliath. And he's telling Saul this. And Saul said to David, Thou art not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him. So Saul didn't think he was able to. For thou art but a youth, and he a man of war from his youth. So David was like watching the sheep, right? And Goliath was a man of war from his youth. And David said unto Saul, Thy servant kept his father's sheep. Uh, and there came a lion and a bear and took a lamb out of the flock. And I went out after him and smote him and delivered it out of his mouth. And when he rose against me, I caught him by his beard and smote him and slew him. David took a lion by his beard and, and killed the lion. Then thy, the servant slew both the lion and the bear and the bear as well. And this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them, seeing he hath defied the armies of the living God. 
David said, moreover, the Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear, he will deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. So David knew it, right? When he's he, applying for a job, he's a great resume. Yeah, he's killed a lion, he's killed a bear. Oh, uh, man. But he, he knew it, right? Like, God will deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. He will. And Saul said unto David, go, and the Lord be with thee. God is with them. And Saul armed David with his armor, and he put a helmet of brass upon his head also. Uh, also he armed him with a coat of mail. And David girded his sword upon, sword upon his armor, and he essayed to go, for he had not proved it. And David said unto Saul, I cannot go with these, for I have not proved them. And David put them off. So he didn't even take his armor and uh, coat of mail and helmet of brass or even the sword. And he took his staff in his hand and chose him five smooth stones out of the, out of the brook. And he put them in a shepherd's bag, which he had, even in a scrip. And his sling was in his hand, and he drew near the, to the Philistine. And the Philistine came on and drew near unto David, and the man that bare the shield went before him. And when the Philistine looked about and saw David, he disdained him, for he was but a youth and ruddy and of a fair countenance. So not much to look at there compared to Goliath, being the man of war since his youth. And the Philistine and uh, said unto David, Am I a dog that thou comest to me with staves? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. And the Philistine said to David, Come to me, and I will give thy flesh unto the fowls of the air and to the beasts of the field. Then said David to the Philistine, This is actually the line of scripture I was looking for the whole time, and I knew it was coming up soon. Then said David to the Philistine, Thou comest to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield. But I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, which thou hast defiled. This day will the Lord deliver thee into mine hand, and I will smite thee, and take thine head from thee, and I will give the carcasses of the host of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the air, and to the wild beasts of the earth, and all the earth may, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. And all this assembly shall know that the Lord saveth not with sword nor in spear, for the battle is the Lord's. And he will give you into our hands. And it came to pass, uh, like, of course, David won with his sling and his, his, his stone, a few stones that he picked up. But I, this is really what I wanted to get to here was, um, and it was a lot of reading to get to this point, but that it was, uh, David knew for sure that he was going to be victorious. And it wasn't because he had a sword and a spear and a shield is because he came in the name of the Lord of hosts and uh, and that God is with him and that the, he knew the battle was God's. And like us today, we preach the gospel. We know that the righteousness is God's. It's not our righteousness. Uh, we can't save ourselves. Jesus did the work. Jesus is the Savior. But there's so many examples in Scripture where it's like David was a you know a shepherd boy um, going up against a man of war and David's victorious, right? Like the Israelites leaving Egypt um, at the Red Sea. The Red Sea parted for them, but the the Red Sea swallowed up the Egyptians following after them. Like um, there's just so many examples where the the one you would think would be weaker, like to look at or physically, you know, even Jesus Christ when he came, right? He's, um, you know, they 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 killed him. They said, when he was on the cross, he said, "Save yourself if you're the." Son of God. They to, they were looking on the outside, but God looketh on the heart, right? So today we know our righteousness is not of ourselves. Uh, it's of God. That's an interesting line, man, that David said. And all the, this assembly shall know that the Lord saveth not with sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hands. If you look at Gideon, Right where the hundred men, well actually three hundred, they they just took trumpets, they mm -hmm. were around the camp. That's in the Judges six and seven. Yeah, you can see that they didn't take up the sword. Um, Israel, when they came out of Egypt, they didn't take up arms, and the the sea devoured the Egyptians. So man, that's true. Like we don't, we don't need to pick up a gun or. What about when know, uh, when Jesus uh, when sword. Peter took, Peter took a sword out of his and he cut off the uh, the ear of the was it the high yep. 
one of the people Great trying to point. take Jesus. And Jesus said, put your sword back in its uh, sheath, right? And P Peter did want to take a sword. <laughs> yeah, but Jesus corrected oh, him. And he even healed his ear, right? He said, um, uh, turn the other cheek. You know, if any man's mighty on one cheek, turn to him also the other cheek. Um, like, don't fight back with, with swords and spears. That's the kingdom of God's not, you know, they, they were waiting for a savior uh, with probably with swords and stuff, right? They're waiting for like a their, their nation to be delivered in this earth, you know, because they had all those wars over the years. But it was, it was a spiritual thing. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. And uh, they just circ they circled, uh, was it six days? And on the seventh day, they circled again and they blew the trumpets and then the walls of Jericho fell down. There's no like, um, you know, like weapons of war, but it was, it was God himself that was with them. Yeah. So who else? We got Egypt, we got Gideon, we got Jesus Christ with, with Peter. Peter. Um, Peter, yeah. Um, yes. Paul, Paul was uh, Mordecai, maybe many times. Yeah. Mordecai. Yeah. Yeah. They, they want to kill all the Jews, right? With Mordecai. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. They didn't. Uh, they didn't fight back with uh, with weapons, did they? With uh, physical weapons. Mordecai. Let's see. That's in uh, Esther. That was the one uh, Esther. She she was married, and they didn't know he didn't his uh, the king didn't know that she was um, a Jew or Jewish. Yeah. Amen. Which, yeah, he was hanged. There you go. Yeah, at the end. So he was hanged. Yeah, but he was he was the one that was trying to kill the Jews, right? He was trying to make the, the king to kill all of the Jews because they worshipped uh, because they worshipped uh, God. Yep. Yeah, they didn't fight back though, not with uh, weapons of, uh, but they, they prayed. I think they uh, fasted and prayed because they knew that Esther was in the, in the, with the king. Mordecai mm -hmm. was, he fasted and prayed, I believe. I'm gonna eat dinner real quick. I'll be uh, right back. I don't know if you're still live then, but yeah, sounds good. Bro. All right. Yeah. So I'll just pick up here because because we're here anyway. So uh, uh, yeah. So when Esther was married to the king of, I have to remember, was it Babylon or? Uh, Ahasuerus, this is Ahasuerus, which reigned. Now it came to pass in the days of Ahasuerus, this is Ahasuerus, which reigned from India, even unto Ethiopia, over 107 and 20 provinces, so the king of many, uh, many nations at that time, that in those days when the king Ahasuerus sat on the throne of his kingdom, which was in Shushan, his, the palace, in the third year of his reign, he made a feast unto all his princes and his servants, the power of Persia and media, uh, the nobles and princes of the provinces being before him, when he shewed the riches of his glorious kingdom and the honor of his excellent majesty many days, even on hundred and fourscore days. And when these days were expired, the king made a feast unto all the people that were present in Shushan, the palace, both unto great and small, seven days in the court of the garden of the king's palace, where were white, green, and blue hangings fastened with cords and of fine linen and purple to silver rings and pillars of marble. The beds were of gold and silver upon a pavement of red and blue and white and black and marble. Um, so I'm just going to read down or go down a bit here. <clears throat> yeah, he had a wife, Vashti, who had refused to come at the king's commandment. And at that time, it was... Uh, 
she she broke that law to come to, at the king's commandment. What shall we do unto the queen Vashti according to law? Because she hath not performed the commandment of the king Hasurius by the chamberlains. Uh, and Mamukin answered before the king and the princes, Vashti the queen hath not done wrong to the king only, but to all also to all the princes and to all the people that are in the provinces of the king Hasurius. For this deed of the queen shall come abroad unto all women, so that they shall despise their husbands in their eyes, when it shall be reported. The king Asurius commanded Vashti the queen to be brought in before him, but she came not. Likewise shall the ladies of Persia and Media say this day unto all the king's princes, which have heard of the deed of the queen. Thus shall there arise too much contempt and wrath. If it please the king, let there go a royal commandment from him, and let it be written among the laws of the Persians and the Medes, that it be not altered that Vashti come no more before the king is serious, and let the king give her royal estate unto another, give her royal estate unto another that is better than she. So that was Esther that came. Um, but uh, the king didn't know that she was a Jew. Uh, and it came to pass that Morde uh, not Mordecai, but Mordecai was Esther's um, father, I believe. Uh, and yeah, and they brought a bunch of women, maidens, uh, before the king. And he brought up Hadassah, was, was Esther's name. That is Esther, his uncle's daughter. So it's actually Mordecai's uh, Sorry, let me just read. And, af and after these after these things, when the wrath of the, of King Hasarius was appeased, he remembered Vashti and what she had done and what was decreed against her. Then said the king's servants that ministered unto him, let there be a fair young virgin sought for the king, and let the king appoint officers in all the provinces of his kingdom, that they may gather together all the fair young, vir fair young virgins unto Shushan, the palace, to the house of the women, unto the custody of Hedji, the king's chamberlain, keeper of the women, and let their things for purification be given them, and let the maiden which pleaseth the king be queen instead of Vashti, and the thing pleased the king, and he did so. so that was what was happening. Now in Shushan, the palace, there was a certain Jew whose name was Mordecai, the son of Jer, the son of Shim Shimei, the son of Kish, a Benjamite. So that was Jew Mordecai was a Jew, the son of Jer, the son of Shimei, the son of Kish, a Benjamite. That's Mordecai who had been carried away from Jerusalem with the captivity, which had been carried away with Jeconiah, the king of Jeconiah, king of Judah, whom Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, had carried away. And he brought up Hadassah, that is Esther. So Mordecai brought up Hadassah, that is Esther, his uncle's daughter. So Mordecai's uncle's daughter, it was who Esther was to Mordecai. For she had neither father nor, nor mother, and the maid was fair and beautiful, whom Mordecai, when her father and mother were dead, took for his own daughter. So that's Mordecai, I thought, was uh, her father. But he was um, her uh, uncle's daughter, but he raised her up. Um, he took her for his own daughter. Her parents had died. So it came to pass when the king's commandment and his decree was heard, and when many maidens were gathered together, gathered together unto Shushan the palace to the custody of Haggai, that Esther was brought also unto the king's house to the custody of Haggai, keeper of the women. And the maiden pleased him, and she obtained kindness of him. And he speedily gave her things for purification, which things, with things as belonged, with such things as belonged to her, and seven maidens, which were meet to be given her out of the king's house. And he preferred her and her maids unto the best place uh, of the house of the women. Esther had not shewed her people nor her kindred. So this was the point I was going to bring up. Is uh, She she never showed or shewed. She never shewed her people nor her kindred. She never told them that um, she was a Jew. For Mordecai had charged her that she should not shew it. And so the king ends up choosing Esther and they get married. But then there's a, a man who wants to take the power, you know, away, which was Haman. Um, and Haman was like, uh, tried to convince the king to kill all the Jews. And the king didn't know his own wife or the queen, you know, was, was a Jew at the time. And then 
but the the point I was trying to make here is that Mordecai had all the people fast and pray, I believe. That's just what I wanted to find because they knew that the, the king was being told that the Jews, um, if it was that they worshipped, you know, God or, you know, why it was, but there was actually a, a law, it was appointed that they would all, you know, they would all be killed by the king. This was before the king knew that um, Esther was actually a Jew. Uh, but the point of, sorry, I wanted to make was that Mordecai had the people um, fast and pray. They didn't rebel with swords. They didn't rebel with spears and, and, and shields and everything like that. They didn't fight physically there. They prayed. God was with them. They went to God. That was the whole point I was trying to make with this here. Um, Yeah, I can't seem to find it now. Um, that Mordecai, let me just search here. Mordecai. Mordecai. So this was Esther is actually to, to Mordecai. Then Esther bade them return Mordecai this answer. So Esther was speaking to Mordecai through um, through um, Hatach, I guess. Uh, but Esther was speaking, you know, messaging to Mordecai there. Then Esther bade them return Mordecai this answer. Go gather together all the Jews that are present in Shishan and fast ye for me and neither eat nor drink three days, night or day. I also and my maidens will fast likewise. And so will I go in unto the king, which is not according to the law, not according to the law. And if I perish, I perish. So Mordecai went his way and did according to all that Esther had commanded them. So, yeah, they, my point there was just that they did not um, fight with, you know, physically to try to overtake the king or anything like that. They just prayed and they fasted. Well, they they passed they, they they fasted for sure, but I believe they prayed also. But they were they sought God is is the point. Uh, David and with the lions, not David, sorry, Daniel um, with the lions. It actually wasn't. Uh, yeah, Daniel with the lions. Um, he, I think he said he knew that God would save him. Daniel delivered, uh, God delivered Daniel from the power of the lions. He hath delivered and rescueth. He delivereth and rescueth, and where he worketh signs and wonders in heaven and on earth, who hath delivered Daniel from the power of the lions. So it's God. He's uh, mighty to save. He's our savior. Um, here it says, David, or Daniel, sorry. Then the king commanded, and they brought Daniel and cast him into the den of lions. Now the king spake and said unto Daniel, Thy God, whom thou servest continually, he would deliver thee. So this was like the king had already made the decree, and their law was that if the king already made the decree, he can't go back on his word anymore. Like that's the law. He can't override his own. He can't overturn his own laws once they're made. And he had already made it. He was kind of tricked into it by his own people. Uh, but so he was stuck to it, and the king was, uh, you know, um, sad that he had to you know had to go through with it but he, so king saying to daniel 
Thy God, whom thou servest continually, he will deliver thee. The king believed it. And a stone was brought, and I think Daniel said it as well. And Daniel was praying. These, the, then these men assembled and found Daniel praying and making supplication before his God. And the whole thing was like the reason Daniel was, um, you know, accused before the king was that he was praying in the first place to his to God, you know, and uh, they wanted to outlaw that. Um, and Daniel just kept praying anyway. Uh, um, trying to find where Daniel's was not afraid to go with the lions. Then said Daniel unto the king, O king, live forever. My God hath sent his angel and hath shut the lion's mouth, that they have not heard me, for as much as before him innocency was found in me, and also before thee, O king, have I done no hurt. So it was God delivered. Daniel didn't um, fight with swords and with uh, spears and, and shields and helmets and things, physical things. He, you know, he believed on God. Uh, Shadrach, Abignego, I can't think of how they say his name. Shadrach um, into the fiery furnace. They were delivered as well. They didn't fight. They refused to, to, to worship the, the idol. The, the gold statue of, of Nebuchadnezzar. But they didn't fight, but I delivered them. Um, that's also in the book of Daniel as well. And whoso falleth not down in worship, that he should be cast into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. So these Jews, they they chose not to worship idols, not to worship someone other than their God. And those idols are not even someone anyway. They're just uh, they're just things anyway. They're created things. But they, he chose not to worship them. They chose not to worship the, the gold statue. Then certain, there are certain Jews whom thou hast set over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Sadrach, Mesh, Meshach, and Abednego. These men, O king, have, have not regarded thee. They serve not thy gods, nor worship, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar, in his rage and fury, commanded to bring Sadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They, then they brought these men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar spake and said unto them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that de, do not ye serve my gods, nor worship the golden image which I have set up? Now if ye be ready, that at what time ye hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, and dulcimer, and all kinds of music, ye fall down and worship the image which I have made? Well, but if ye worship not, ye shall be cast the same hour into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. And who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in the, this matter. They're not full of cares. They're not careful about it. They don't mind. If, it's so, if it be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thy, thy hand, O king. Uh, but if not... Be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. They'd rather die. But they knew, they believed. They knew that God would deliver them. He will deliver us out of thy hand, O king. God is able. So they didn't fight with swords. They didn't fight with spears and so, uh, shields and helmets and all of those phys you know, physical things. They knew God is their strength. And it's the same for the church today. We know God is their strength. You know, we don't, uh, even our own understanding, we don't lean on our own, told not to lean on unto our own understanding, but to acknowledge God in all our ways, and he'll direct our paths. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. So if you're hearing this, and you're hearing the gospel, and in the past you've been leaning on your own understanding, well, we're just only going by the scriptures. Ye let God be true. 
but every man a liar, as it is written, that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings and mightest overcome when thou art judged. So the gospel of Christ, God was manifest in the flesh. He came into his own people. The Jews, they, they did not believe on Jesus Christ. They killed him. Uh, his death was the propitiation for our sins, the sins of the whole world. He died for the sins of the world. He was buried in a sepulcher, but God raised him from the dead on the third day, and he was seen alive by his witnesses after that. Um, many witnesses, even above 500 brethren at once, saw him alive, and it was for the forgiveness of sins. If you believe it with your heart, you have everlasting life. And that's all you must do to be saved, is to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, to believe that gospel. And um, just like, you know, all through the scriptures, it was not these men's strength, their own strength, not Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego's own strength. It was not um, Mordecai's or, or Esther's own strength, you know, that uh, was not um, uh, was not uh, David's own strength uh, when he went against Goliath. Um, it wasn't even just David and Goli against Goliath. It was David against Goliath, and they had an agreement that their whole peoples would serve one another, whichever one won. So it wasn't just the two fighting. It was it was the peoples, the whole peoples through those two. But David knew, and these men knew that God would deliver them. They just knew. And it's, it's the same for salvation. You, you can't think that you can save yourself. You can't think that you can do good, your own good works to go to heaven or, or your, right, your own righteousness will ever be good enough because you can't get in that way. God is our Savior. God is the Savior. Um, and Jesus, you must believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. I say Jesus is God. It's it's true. Jesus is God. He's the Father. Jesus is the Father. Jesus is the Word. Jesus is the Holy Ghost. Jesus is the name of the Father. Jesus is the name of the Son. Jesus is the name of the Word. Jesus is the name of the Holy Ghost. Uh, in First John it says, For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. So they all have the name Jesus. Jesus said, I will send the Comforter, uh, in my name, in his name, in the name Jesus, in his name. And then John it said, I am come in my Father's name, Jesus. Those are Jesus' words. I am come in my Father's name. So the man, Jesus Christ, he came in the name of the Father, which is Jesus. And in Philippians, it tells us that uh, he was given him a name which from God. Jesus Christ was given a name from God. It came from God. It's God's name. Uh, wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name, not one of many names, but a name, which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. God gets glory when Jesus Christ is confessed to be Lord. Jesus Christ is Lord. He gets glory. It's his name. Uh, it was given to him. He received it. In Hebrews, he uh, he inherited the name, it says. He, he inherited the name. Um, in Hebrews 1.4, God, who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in times past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, we don't purge our own sins. He purged our sins. He died. For, Jesus Christ died for our sins. You can't purge your own sins. You can't make your own way to heaven. When he had by, he had work to go to, good, do good works to go to heaven. When he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high, being so, he had finished the work. And he's our mediator between God and man. For there's one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. He's our mediator, Jesus Christ. Uh, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high, being made so much better than the angels, as he hath by inheritance. So inheritance is something he received from his father. By inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. So his name, Jesus said, I am come in the name, I am coming in my Father's name, um, which is Jesus, of course. And so he inherited that name from his Father. And in Isaiah, it says, his name shall be called the mighty God, talking about Jesus. So um, 
in Isaiah here, uh, chapter 9, For unto us a child is born. This, of course, is a prophecy of Jesus Christ to come into the world. Uh, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government be, shall be upon his shoulder. And they were, right? You know, they put a cross on him. They carried a cross before he died on the cross. And uh, his name, his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor. Jesus is wonderful. Jesus is Counselor. His name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God. Jesus is the Mighty God. His name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Jesus is the Prince of Peace. Jesus is the Everlasting Father. Jesus is the Mighty God. Now, I'm not saying that, uh, that God ever died. Uh, I'm not saying that God died on the cross. God cannot die. God is immortal. God is immortal. God is eternal. God is a spirit. And those that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So it was not God who died, but it was Jesus Christ, his son, the man, Christ Jesus. And the man, Jesus Christ, died. But the man, Jesus Christ, came in the name of the Father, which is Jesus. He inherited the name from his Father. His name shall be called the Mighty God, because Jesus is the Mighty God. His name shall be called the Everlasting Father, because he is the Everlasting Father. So that's just more scriptures to show it. Um, and in Matthew 28, uh, Jesus came and spake unto them, to the eleven at the time, the eleven disciples, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name, not one of many names, the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. So there's one name for the Father I mean, God has had many names through the scriptures, but the name that he sent them to baptize in is the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. So the name of the Father, the name of the Son, the name of the Holy Ghost is Jesus. They, they baptized in the name Jesus. Uh, so in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, same time periods there, same things happening uh, throughout those times. And then Acts 2 they baptized in the name of Jesus. And Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. In Acts 8, um, For as yet he was fallen upon none of them, only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Um, And he said unto them, Unto what then were you baptized? And they said, Unto John's baptism. Then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him, which should come after him, that is on Christ Jesus. And when they heard, when they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. So they baptized in the name of Jesus. They baptized in the name of the Father. They baptized in the name of the Son. They baptized in the name of the Holy Ghost. And that name is Jesus. It's also the name which is above every name. So no name can be higher than God's name. And uh, that's what it says in Philippians uh, uh, 2. It says, um, uh, sorry, Philippians 2 here. It says, uh, wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. So, you know, the, the highest name there is would be God's name, certainly. So there's just a whole bunch of scriptures to show that Jesus is the name of God. And it's the name we must believe on. And uh, But it was not God who died. It was his son, Jesus Christ, the man, Christ Jesus, who died and was buried and God rose for, uh, from the dead and who was seen by his witnesses about their life. What's going on, Brother Patrick? What's up, Brother Mike? My apologies. I was, uh, I didn't even realize we were live. I, hadn't, I haven't checked the fellowship yet. I would okay. have been here a little earlier. Yeah, apologize. All good. Yeah. So uh, it's 9.30, right? My time. So it was about, uh, yeah, so hour and 15 minutes ago. I was thinking it was a little later. I don't know why. Uh, maybe because of last week. But, yeah, God is good. Uh, amen for hosting today. Give my report while we're at it. Uh, Jesus is the Holy One. Jesus is the incorruptible one. Um, and uh, Jesus God the Father sent his son Jesus Christ 
uh, to be a propitiation, uh, reconciling us back to himself uh, through what he did, uh, the works that God did through him. And um, I believe that he was sent to his own. His own received him not. Uh, they put him to death. He was buried. He rose again. And on the third day he rose. Uh, he was even seen. And when he was seen, um, or those witnesses were chosen by God to see him. So uh, now he sits at the right hand throne of God. And uh, that is what you must believe with your heart in order to, to have eternal salvation. Um, it says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Jesus Christ is only begotten because he's born in the Holy Spirit and it's to whosoever. So no matter what race, creed, um, any kind of discretion, um, you can you can be saved too. So what's our... Uh, What's our topic? Uh, I don't know if it's preaching the gospel, but there was um, a bit of a study there with uh, Kundert earlier about how God, uh, like David, for example, against Goliath and uh, uh, mm -hmm. Esther, you know, and Mordecai and um, the Israelites leaving uh, Israel, like a bunch of examples where they knew their strength was God and they didn't fight back with swords, like Peter with Jesus Christ and uh, mm -hmm. just a whole bunch of examples like that. Uh, in the gospel and just sharing scriptures. So what's going on, Brother Daniel? Hey, man, Brother, Brother Daniel? Good morning. Um, blessed brothers, thank you. I'd like to share the gospel before I continue. i sorry. I just wanted to share that I believe on the Lord Christ Jesus as my Lord and Savior. I also believe that God was manifested in the man Christ Jesus as, and he came as the Son of God. And he also inherited the Father's name. And in the meantime, the man Christ Jesus died as an innocent man. He, he died by his own people, killed by his own people, the Jews. And he was crucified, was buried on the third day. God rose him from that grave and he was seen of many. That is a gospel we must believe on because that is the, that is the way. Jesus is the way, the truth and the life. And that is the gospel we must believe to, in order to be in heaven. And thank you for letting me share, brother. Amen. Yeah, I believe that gospel too that, that Patrick shared, uh, uh, preached, and that um, Daniel preached as well. We're, we're just preaching the same thing Paul preached, and you'll notice that uh, Patrick's not boasting in himself to go to heaven. He knows, you know, he cannot go that way. It's be a different way, trying trying to get another way, which we're not. Uh, we don't believe uh, there's any other way. Jesus is the way, as uh, Brother Daniel just said. You know, there's only one way, and that's that's Jesus. And to believe on Him, His name, believe on the gospel of Christ, uh, the gospel of Jesus. So. Yeah, amen. Amen for preaching, uh, brothers. Yes, amen. You know, yesterday I had to go to a funeral yesterday, and um, my uncle apparently, I guess they they are um, Jehovah's Witnesses. Uh, so, um, I went to go pay my respects to my uncle and his family, show my respects and my condolences. But I did, I, I was, I, of course, I sat down and listened to what the pastor was saying. And I noticed that they do not emphasize or, or boast on Jesus or his name. Um, the scripture says, I shared this to the, um, my uncle's daughter after outside of the building. In a parking lot, I told her, you know, the scripture says that for there is none other name given among men whereby we must be saved. You know, so that name of Jesus is a name that was sent. And there's a name that was given unto men. So there is none other name now. So there is no other name given unto men whereby we must be saved. That by the name of that. By the name of, and neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Amen. That name is Jesus. You know, so, um, yes, Jehovah is God's name. God has many names. But at this point, there, that name Jesus was given unto men. At that at the in the Old Testament, the name Jesus wasn't given yet. Um, 
So how can I say this? That yes, believe on the name of Jesus and not hiding anything. You know, just believe on his name. His name is the one that saves. Um, but yeah, sorry for mentioning that, but I just wanted to pinpoint that out. Oh man, don't be sorry. That's the truth, right? Like that's what the scripture. We're, well, again, we're only saying what the scriptures say. We're not uh, making up our own doctrine or going outside yeah. of the scriptures or anything like that. We're just saying, look, be it known unto all, all you people listening and, and watching, uh, yeah. and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand here before you whole. This is the stone which was set at naught of you builders, which is become the head of the corner. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. So it's the only name that saves. So that's a great point. You must believe it. Yes. Yes. Amen. Um, definitely a different doctrine by from what I experienced yesterday. I mean, I already knew this, but it was like I heard it again, yeah? So it was kind of a shock. I mean, it wasn't a, a surprise to me. But, um, you know, I, ho I hope he believed on the name of Jesus, you know? So that's, what I believe. that's what I hope. I hope in him. So Amen. that's the best we could do. Amen for preaching there too. Uh, yeah. People. It was in a, it was kind of like a, a, a timing. Was timing was everything too for that one. What do you say about uh, praying uh, also for me that God would open a door of utterance? I think Paul was in um, at the end of uh, Ephesians uh, 5, 6, right here, where it says, um, Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching there and too with all perseverance and supplication for all saints and for me, praying for me also and for me that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in bonds out there and I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. So Paul was, you know, asked to pray for him, you know, that utterance may be given unto him, but, you know, uh, yes. and also he prayed also or, um, that God would open a door. Uh, you know, of utterance or to, to preach, I believe it says. Well, Kunder is back. What's happening there, brother? It's about a car. Welcome, Kunder. How are you today, Kunder? You got to say it right. Kunder. I said Kunder. My phone, my phone was messed up. <laughs> <laughs> How are we all doing? Blessed. 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 Amen. It says, with all praying also for us that God would open unto us a door of utterance to speak the mystery of Christ, for which I am also in bonds, that I may make it manifest as I ought to speak. That was what I was thinking of there. That's what, that's what happened to me last night. Like I had one door went open for me, you know, and I, and, and, and um, yeah. apparently, apparently that's my, like my Calabash cousins too. And, and they study with my mom. My mom studies with them. And they brought and they brought that up, and then I told them that you know, uh, me and my mom, we get different. They, we teach different doctrines. I told them, you know, um, I believe, you know, I told them my belief, but but I also told them that my mom and I, we get different belief system. We get on totally different doctrine compared to them. So I had to make that known that I don't study with my mom, you know, because there was what they was thinking that I do. But um, yeah, they did not. I also did. I also also um noticed that they did not mention the gospel, the full gospel, and and they did not specify that God was manifested in Him. They did not. They did not mess up. Um, they did not mention that. I mean, they're no different from anybody else. I mean, essentially what it comes down to when we talk to these people uh, yes. is that they don't believe that um, they either, with, well, with specifically with Jehovah's Witnesses, um, they don't believe that, that Jesus Christ um, is God by way of God's Holy Spirit being in him, being the only begotten, um, the firstborn. 
and then they don't believe that Jesus is God the Father. And of course, you know, we we encounter that a lot. That uh, that's like the majority of people. They don't believe that the name of God the Father is Jesus. They don't believe that uh, you know Jesus is God the Father. Um, but to us, it's it's clear. You know, our minds are corrupted by the simplicity of Christ. Um, we know, uh, we know it, we understand it because we believe it. And, you know, we, we see what God has done, you know, by him making a way he did that through his son. He manifested himself through his own creation, you know, um, by believing that and not that it's just, you know, some story or, you know, whatever you want to add to it, that it wasn't this or it wasn't that. But just by truly believing it with your heart, uh, that's how you're saved. So, yeah. And Jehovah's Witnesses, man, I, I've had a lot of them around me in my life. And it's just a very kind of peculiar people. Um, to me, they just seem a little off. They kind of remind me of Mormons. But, you know, everybody needs Jesus. So, Yeah, well, Paul Precy went kind of everywhere, didn't he? He went to those of Mars Hill. He went to... You know, many places, many peoples. I mean, whosoever, whosoever. Right? Man, <clears throat> man it, I actually thought about it. Like, you know, <clears throat> Muslims that, that you know that that the religion is Antichrist and all these other religions, but maybe all these different sects of so-called Christianity even is even worse because Mormons. Or uh, Jehovah Witnesses, they always start off, hey, can we share the gospel of the, of Jesus Christ? That's how they start off. So now the false gospel is being attached to that name. Yeah. yeah. And That's true. They even have a church called the Church of Jesus Christ of yeah. something, something, right? So it's like, yeah, it's all, yeah. So so, so it, it takes something that is true and, and it, and it, change it to a lie yeah and now people and now you talk about the gospel and now people associate that with yeah with something that they've heard from all these jehovah witnesses yeah. that they are just spreading lies and that's even more damaging i that's my opinion than you know some of these other religions yeah man my grandmother wouldn't uh, hear it from me because she had so many people at her door you know so many jehovah witnesses and, and people trying to bombard her with that kind of thing but i'm, I'm saying this is the truth but she didn't want to hear it I mean, at least john the baptist i mean he didn't believe ultimately but at least he was referring to you know jesus christ the the truth like you know um but he just didn't believe it so they they don't believe it and are not preaching the truth. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, I know that, there's a there's a part in um John the Baptist said that um I baptize you with water, but this man shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost. So I know that John the Baptist said that to people. He knew Jesus, but Jesus didn't know him. He, I think he preached Jesus. Um, yeah, I thought. I thought. I think. I think he did meet Jesus. He did know Jesus. Yeah, know him as in knew, knew him just like the Pharisees and Sadducees knew of Jesus, and yeah, and disciples yeah. that didn't believe they knew. They knew. They knew Jesus. They knew of Jesus. Maybe this they, is. Yeah. Oh, dear Patrick, sorry, my bad. No, go ahead. My bad. I didn't mean to interrupt either. It then said yeah. Paul. John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. So John the Baptist, John the Baptist uh, said to the people that they should believe on Christ Jesus. Right. Uh, I see that. I see that just now, yeah. But the, the, even these people hadn't uh, heard, you know, they, they had only had known John's baptism, right? So, but yeah. John had some disciples as well baptizing there. So, so when they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Yeah, because that's but what they must after, do. And that's after John told them this too. Well, this was Paul here. But yeah, like yeah, I guess I guess John the Baptist did did say to the people, 
Yes. It's just I like when somebody that... goes to church and these yeah. pastors are preaching not the truth. They're talking about Jesus and everybody has their opportunity to believe on the Lord. God is going to send that preacher yeah. and it's, it's up to them. So just like, you know, I went to church for years. God did his own dealings with me, just like he's, you know, he does it with everybody else. And I, and I chose to believe, I believe it, you know, so John the Baptist was referring to Jesus, you know, even though he, him himself didn't believe, but God, you know, deals with each one of us. So, yeah, I like that. See, look, they never all obey the gospel. Mm -hmm. You know, so the gospel, they didn't believe the whole, they didn't believe. So. It's like the parable of the sower and the seed in Luke uh, 8. And so then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And the parable is this, the seed is the word of God. So just preaching, right? It's not um, he that plotteth, he that planteth or nothing. Said, but he, God, uh, God that bringeth the increase. So, you know, as long as we're preaching the gospel. And faith cometh by hearing. Yeah. Where he's talking about spiritually hearing. So, you know, not just like the normal audible voice, you hear something, but in order to, you hear it, of course, you hear it as preached, but then they can hear it because, you know, they have the ears to hear. They have the eyes to, you know, they believed it because they had the ears to hear. So, yes, everyone hears it audibly because faith cometh by hearing. But then once you become a believer, then you can you can say, you know, you, you have the ears to hear. You have the, the eyes to see because you are now the spirit. Your you know, your heart was open. Amen. Jesus would say often, like, he that hath ears to hear, let him hear. Uh, it is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Amen. That's Jesus talking too, yeah? Yeah. Amen. The words that I speak unto you. Yeah, that's right. We have his word today, so we know all of this is God's. All of these words are God's. So when we quote them, that's the seed being planted. And if it falls on good ground, then, Amen. you know, hopefully they'll believe unto salvation. Keep preaching, preachers. That's awesome. Good to hear, Dan, about that. Yeah, uh, yeah I was, I, I, I know... I know what's going to be one challenge. I mean, just waiting for the time, you know, waiting for the time and the thing where we was leaving and then they're all by the parking lot, hugging each other. Okay, love you guys. Good night. You know, then I had a window right there. I'm like, yeah, I hear my chance right there. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I studied earlier with uh, Kunder. There was, uh, we're looking at examples through it. Scriptures where people who believed in God, you know, if it was the Jews in the Old Testament or the church um, in the New Testament or just through the scriptures when God was with the people and they believed, you know, like David didn't, he, he left go of all his sword and, and armor and stuff. He knew, and he said he knew that he would prevail, you know, God is with him. And he, you know, or Mordecai and Esther and uh, the Israelites leaving. Uh, the Egyptians uh, escaping the Egyptian, uh, Egyptians and um, Peter with Jesus Christ. When Peter took out his sword to, to cut the guard's ear, um, Jesus said, put your sword away. Like just a bunch, a lot of different ones where it was just God's, they knew it was God's strength. It wasn't just like God is with them. and But that happened as well, like lots of times. But like they just knew, like they, uh, Abednego and uh, Meshach and uh, the other there, they, they said, God will deliver us from your hand. Like they just knew, like they were confident, like they knew. And it's been a good study because they didn't fight back with like swords and spears and things. They just, they knew that God was their strength and God would deliver them. Right. Amen. Amen. You know, so that's like us today. Like we know that it's not our, our goodness to go to heaven. We know that we can't save ourselves. We can't, um, we can't uh, get our, you know, you can't, um, 
purge our own sins. But we can't do our work to go to heaven, but it's God's work. God's the Savior. Amen. Also Jericho too, right? The walls of Jericho. Yeah. I'm just thinking of examples. So when we read it, I read this in my home quite a lot. My wife here, um, this chapter, especially go to it quite a lot. Uh, it's um, by faith Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac. So I mean, like he didn't fight against God. I guess there he, he obeyed God. And he that had received the promises offered up his only begotten son, of whom it was said that in Isaac shall thy seed be called, accounting that God was able. It's the same thing that uh, Mish uh, Mishtak and Abednego are saying, God is able. And Daniel with the lions, you know, and uh, uh, like they knew God was able. David against Goliath, God is able to live me out of your hand. Accounting that God was able to raise him up even from the dead, from whence... Also, he received from a figure. By faith, Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau concerning things to come. There are more examples here. By faith, Jacob, when he was a dying, blessed both the sons of Joseph and worshipped, leaning upon the top of his staff. Um, uh, where was the one I was looking for here? By faith, they passed through the Red Sea as by dry land. When the Egyptians are saying to do were drowned, um, the Jericho we looked at, <clears throat> the harlot Rahab. Um, uh, and what sh shall I more say? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon and of Barak and of Samson and of Jephthi, of David also and Samuel and of the prophets, who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong. Wax valent in fight, turn to flight, turn to flight the armies of the uh, aliens. And then Paul is like, when I'm weak, I'm strong. Paul knew it too. Um, yeah, like Stephen. Stephen was stoned. He didn't fight back with swords or spears or anything. I think it's um, love, love thine enemy, right? He, Jesus said, you've heard that it was said, love thy neighbor as thyself. Hate thine enemy. I pray for those who persecute you. You have heard it that it hath been said, thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, and do them do good to them that hate you. And pray for them which despisefully use you and persecute you, that ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. For he maketh the sun to rise on the evil and on the good, and sendeth rain on the just and the unjust. So, I mean, like when Jesus was on the cross, he didn't fight back when they said, uh, um, if ye be the Son of God, come down from the cross, save yourself. He even said he could, he could pray to send a... Uh, the Father to send 12 legions, 12 legions of angels, I think he said, to defend him. I just found the word barber in Scripture. Just, uh, <laughs> kind of random, but... Barber, word barbers in Scripture? Yeah, it says barber's razor. See, no, no new thing on the sun. Oh. Ezekiel 5 1. How did you find that? Were you just kind of scanning, scanning through? I did a word search on Beard. <laughs> Aaron's beard. <laughs> um, uh, how good it is uh, for brethren to dwell in unity. And then it talks about Aaron's beard. He's an Aaron spirit. Uh, let me just check it quickly there. It's Didn't haunted. Davis tell somebody that uh, by the time you you, you guys' beards grow back, come back down from the mountain or something like that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. He also I got to Jericho, and that's what David said that they should tarry at Jericho till their beards were 
brown, something like that. Mm -hmm. And then I taught them beards or beard. <laughs> David, David grabbed the, the lion by the beard as well when he killed the lion. Yep. Mm -hmm. Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard that went down to the skirts of his garments. As the dew of Hermon and as the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord commanded the blessing, even life forevermore. Man, never lost one life. beard. That got to be a pretty tight grip to hold a hold a uh, a lion or yeah a lion by its beard. That's wow. Uh, and then for Samson to to um, kill kill it by opening its jaws, I think it's, it describes it. That's crazy. Also random. Sorry. Caught him by his beard and smote him and slew him. David did lion. I mean, because you'd be avoiding the mouth where the teeth are. So, I mean, that makes sense. Um, and even in, you know, war and how he would fight against other nations, God gave him the wisdom to do that. So it's just interesting to think about. Yeah, the um, was it the Samson was what the Nazarene the Nazarites Nazarenes mm -hmm. they weren't, weren't allowed to cut their beard I think what cut their hair. I just read that too. Was it was it as a culture or was it specifically to him? Is that just something that the angel of the Lord? Um, it's the law of the Nazarite commanded. Them to not do with. Say it again, brother Mike. The law, maybe the law of the Nazarite. They the law it. of the Nazarite. Yeah, I have it on my phone. I can't really see the. Um, that's why I always blow it up so I can see the scripture. But, um, it says, and this is the law of the Nazarite: when the days of his separation are fulfilled, he shall be brought into the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. Um, did you see anything about um, no hair cutting? Uh, here, maybe. Down in uh, just saw it here. And the Nazarite shall hmm. shave the head of separation at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. They'll take the hair of the head of separation and put it in the fire, which is under the sacrifice of the peace offerings. And the priest shall take the sod and shoulder of the ram. So that was just like. Um, like a cleansing act almost to um, enter into the um, or for the offering like your I, don't know, I mean when you cut your hair I feel like you're clean like you're you know you're new you're starting over you're new you're fresh you're um, and then when uh, the times where they would where God would um, he made them, I think he made them shave their heads before, and I'm thinking of Moses, um, but yeah, kind of off track, but yeah, um, so that would be for that specific, um, like for an offering, but for their and shall put them upon the hands of the Nazarite after the hair of his separation is shaven. And, the priest, to, yeah. and the priest shall wave them for a wave offering before. So it looks like it's more for the offering than the actual, you know, like it was a commandment for them as a culture. Yeah, the, yeah and number six, I think you're right. I thought there was other scripture, though. I just went here really quickly, so I didn't really read through but it. But the angel of the Lord did specifically say not to cut his hair for his life. Um, I thought it was to do with it being a Naz Nazarite, though, but I, I could be wrong. I haven't found any scriptures to, to back up. Well, he, yeah, it, I think it did say because he is a Nazarite or something like that. I, um, but he... Uh, uh, the angel... Um, where it came, where he came, where the angel came to his parents. To whose parents? Well, his mom was, she was, um, 
she Samson. was Samson. I think she was barren. I may be getting it mixed up with Solomon or Samuel. I'm sorry. Um, but let's go to it because I just literally just read this in my reading. Uh, but the angel of the Lord came to his mom or parents, I believe. Yeah, parents. And uh, told him that they shouldn't cut his hair. I mean, that's we. That's like the hey, Manoa. The whole theme of his his whole the whole story. Um, I think Man Manoa Manoa, he just went past. He was an angel. Let me look up there. Um. Okay, but the angel of the Lord did no more picture Manoa and his wife than. Um. Manoa was. I, I think it was after she had, because the first time he came, and he said that she would bear, and then the second time he saw, she saw him alone, and then she went and grabbed her husband, and then that's when I think that they. But um, my other phone's dead to look yeah, up. The, Manoa wasn't an angel. I think they're da uh, Daniel. Was, um, Manoa, Manoa yeah, was the actual husband. That I no, believe. yeah, he was the husband, but the angel told Manoah that he didn't know that he, he didn't even know he was an angel. Okay, go back to that one you just highlighted, Brother Mike. I think that was it. Where I was okay. Yeah, so and the Lord and the angel of the Lord appeared unto the woman and said unto her, Behold, now thou art barren and bearest not, but thou shalt conceive and bear a son. Now, therefore, beware, I pray thee, and drink not wine, nor strong drink, and eat uh, not any unclean thing. Um, for, lo, thou shalt conceive and bear a son, and no razor shall come on his head, for the child shall be a Nazarite unto God from the womb. Um, and he shall begin to deliver Israel out of the hand of the Philistines. Then the woman came and told her husband, saying, So with the... Uh, no razor shall come on his head, for the child shall be a Nazarite unto God from the womb. So I think what you showed us with the offering, um, it could, it could still be separate, though, because when they were making an offering, they had to shave their head in that moment. But him um, being, being a Nazarite unto priest? God. Number from, six? Was that the priest? There, though? I don't know. I, did, I went to it really fast. I didn't read it. Before I just kind of saw the law of the Nazarite. This yeah, morning. yeah, yeah. It was it was the priest, but they were also Nazarites too, though, right? Yeah, the priests had different um, different things they had to do as well. Mm -hmm. the yeah, yeah, yeah. But does this line show that um, for Nazarites back then they would not no razor would come on any of their heads, or is this just? I don't think so. I think it's still specific to him. Um, for but it, it, it it's almost like it's making a, a distinction. For the child shall be a Nazarite unto God from the womb. So with that colon, you know, it, it definitely is in correlation to no razor being on his head. So I think the Nazarites were known for doing that. Uh, you know, the priests were known for shaving their heads for the offering. It sounds like it was... Um, pretty well known that they would shave their heads but he you know god distinguished samson you know maybe that's why the monks shaved their head yeah the monks i wonder why that's why they shaved their head too hmm. i'm not really I'm sure i'd have to search further i guess i i thought there were scriptures that show that part of their their vows is in Nazareth was not to have any wine or strong drink and not to cut the hair. Nazar, Nazar and impartial match. I think we should just read those. Nazar, partial, partial match, yeah. We'll just go through them. Nazar, yeah, and then the partial match. Numbers two, there's like 44 matches. Uh, yep. Six is a lot of it. Judges. Wonder if I can share that window also for my. Oops. Oops. That's sharing the whole screen. Give me one second. Sorry. 
Her Nazarite, that's laminations, her Nazarites were pure than snow. They were whiter than milk. They were more ruddy in body than rubies. Their polishing was of sapphire. Yeah, it's a good, good study question. I've never, um, like there's lots, some things come up over time that I assumed I had learned before, but if I can't find a scripture for it, then got to go by the scriptures. Jesus, and he shall be called a Nazarene. And that was, uh, okay, yeah, Jesus was called a Nazarene. Yeah, he was called. Yeah. Nazareth is Nazarene, a... Nazareth, called Nazareth. That it might be fulfilled as spoken prophet. He shall be called a Nazarene. Prophet of Nazareth of Galilee. Jesus of Nazarene. So we got Nessa with a Z. Nessa. Nessa. You're from Hawaii. You're Hawaiian. I'm from Florida. I'm a Floridian. Brother Mike's from Canada. <laughs> He's a Canadian. Uh, Kundert? I'm not sure how to say that one. Netherlandian? I don't know. <laughs> Dutch. Oh, Dutch. Yeah. We don't follow that word. <laughs> Dutch, yeah. You know, yeah. actually, if you if you if you Hawaiian and you was born you in Hawaii, you a native Hawaiian. If you not Hawaiian blood. But you was born in Hawaii, you and local. Mm. You're not one Hawaiian, but you and local. You know. So if you just moved from Arizona and just transplant. Yeah, if you if you if you if, 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 you, just, if you, know. you move to Hawaii from Arizona, you would be considered one foreigner. So how far back does it have to go in the years? Because like. Was it like the Garden of Eden in Hawaii then, or like did people not move to Hawaii at one point? I don't think the I don't think the Hawaii was even formed yet at that time. I think Hawaii was um, was I don't know. That's a good question, but you say I mean, it's a tiny island. You know what I mean? Compared to Canada and 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 Africa and the North, yeah, it's such a small it's a small rock in the middle of the Pacific. Do you think it would line up with it with um with after the flood and the giants? And yeah, stuff? I would uh, I would say so because the mountains in Hawaii is very tall. If you look them up, we have really big tall mountains as well. So even I'm pretty before, sure they stuck out of the water. Flood, That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Even before the flood, the mountains were were. I mean, they were even tall, but they weren't covered by so much water. That's a good question, but the but if you look at the rocks in Hawaii, they kind of like like this is the oldest island apparently scientifically saying the oldest one. The youngest island would be the big island they call it Kona and Hilo. Uh, That's the younger island because it's all the rocks are all black. Look like it just came out of the volcano. Or just you know, over here we don't have that black rocks. Only on certain parts, maybe of the island, but it's all it's older already. This island is very old already. Oh, right there, for Manoa. Oh, right there, you you got him, Mike. For Manoa knew that he was an angel of the Lord. So he said, uh, "Be care, uh, be careful to entertain strangers." By some have, what does it say? Some have entertained angels unawares. No, I say, what is that? And Manoah said unto the angel of the Lord, That's I pray one. thee, let Number us detain one. thee until we shall have made ready a kid for thee. And the angel of the Lord said unto Manoah, the, thou, Though thou detain me, I will not eat my bread, thy bread. And if thou wilt offer it burnt offering, thou must offer it unto the Lord. For Manoah knew not that he was an angel of the Lord. And Manoah said unto the angel of the Lord, What is thy name? 
that when thy saying comes to pass, we may do thee honor. And the angel of the Lord said unto him, Why askest thou thus after my name, seeing it is secret? Oh, wow. Secret name, yeah. In wow, Hebrews it's a secret angel. Hebrews 13, to be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unawares. So I don't think he, he said he didn't know, right? He was an angel? Yeah, Manoah, he didn't know he was one, yeah? yeah so he, he didn't want to reveal his name? He was entertaining an angel unawares. He didn't want to reveal his name, right? Was the Lord? The angel didn't want to look like. He didn't want to reveal his name. Can we go back to that really quick? Yeah. Judges 13, 18. For Manoah knew not that, that he was an angel of the Lord, capital L O R D. Oh, so is Manoah referring to the angel as himself? That's what it looks like. He's not. It's not saying that he was an angel, yeah. I think that I think it's it says that more up or something. Though. No, where I was where I was getting to is uh, God the Father has revealed Himself as an angel of the Lord. Um, if he asked His name, and His name wasn't revealed until the New Testament, the name that. Um, or Gabriel. Angel. And uh, Jacob wrestled with God and asked his name as well. Leaf, when Jacob wrestled with God, I think he asked his name. He said, why do you ask my name? Yeah, so that's kind of what, what linked me there. If the name, if he didn't want to reveal his name, because all the other angels, Gabriel said, I'm, I am Gabriel. Um, who else? Is there Sarah, in uh, 24... I think only Gabriel is the only angel that um, shared his name, yeah? Tell me to pray thee thy name. And he said, wherefore is it that thou dost ask after my name? And he blessed him there. And I think that uh, he said he wrestled with God. Therefore, the children of Israel eat. Doesn't say he wrestled with God there somewhere? That's why he named the place. Oh, I've seen for I've seen God face to face. But it says a man up here as well. It says, and uh, and Jacob was left alone, and there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh, and the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, Let me go for the day breaketh. And he said, I will not let thee go except thou bless me. And he said unto him, What is thy name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, Thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince hast thou power with God and with men, and hast prevailed. And Jacob asked him and said, Tell me, I pray thee, thy name. And he said, Wherefore is it that thou dost ask after my name? And he blessed him there. And Jacob called the, the name of the place Peniel, for I have seen God face to face, and my life is preserved. That's a, that's an interesting scripture, because I know we have... Um... Topics on this man. part of um, who who's seeing God, yeah. And this scripture sh says that Jacob said he have seen God face to face, and my life is preserved. And Melchizedek was a man, too. Yeah, but he was a man that who didn't have a um, didn't have a parents or whatever. No beginning, no end, no uh, no mother, no father, no beginning. No beginning of days, I think it said. Neither father nor mother. In Judges 13, it says, uh, And Manoah said unto his wife, well, actually, uh, 1321, it says, But the angel of the Lord did no more appear to Manoah and to his wife. Then Manoah knew that he was an angel of the Lord. And Manoah said unto his wife, We shall surely die because we have seen God. Amen. Yeah. I actually didn't I, 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 so, I, I so, so, so Manoah was a man and an angel then, Manoah. No, Manoah was the father, man. Yeah. Manoah was the father. He, he was the yeah. father. Yeah, he, he was the husband, obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So no, he's Manoah not an angel. Was referring to angel of the Lord. So yeah, that angel... Uh, God appears the angel of the Lord to them. 
Yeah, the angel appeared to Manoa. Manoa spoke to the angel. They're two different. Um, Manoa's the man. Okay, so like, all right there, that scripture that says right there that um, Manoa knew not for that he was an angel, but he's actually referring to the angel that he didn't know that the yeah. that was it. Yeah. So Manoa, no, not that. This he here is not Manoa. This he is. Uh, is the is the angel? Yeah. Yeah, because that's why he's just offering. Um, he wanted to make him food, right? He's offering to make him uh, a kid to eat. For Manua, not yeah, this yeah, Manua, not that he was an angel of the Lord. Yeah. Yeah, because it goes on to saying, "And the angel." Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, I read. I, 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 I read that wrong. Yeah, an angel knows. Now I read angel. it right. And the and of the angels he saith, who maketh his angels spirits and his ministers a flame of fire. And also says about angels here. Um, but to which of the angels said he at any time, sit on my right hand until I make thine enemies a footstool? Are they not all ministering spirits? Those angels, I think, are ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation. Well, see, the angels are called minister spirits. Ministering spirits, yeah. Ministering spirits. That's a good thing to know. Because um, we aren't ministering spirits, are we? No. I mean, you're that, yeah. gospel and you are a spirit, but you're not a not an angel. Like no, you minister, not a ministering spirit. Not, a ministering so. spirit yeah. not, a, not an angel, though. Right, right. But they thought they saw Peter's angel when Peter was at their door. Was it? Or was it? Yeah, it was Peter, right? So are, are we ministers? Do we consider ourselves ministers as it preachers? It's, your, it's administration of the gospel. If somebody would ask me if I was a minister, and I said, you know what? Uh, we do have a ministry. <laughs> By the experiment of this ministration, they glorify God for your professed subjection unto the gospel of Christ and for your liberal, liberal distribution unto them and to all men. Uh, ministers of the gospel, I think it says. Yeah, I will. Let's just look that up quick before you. Uh, I didn't want to call myself a minister and, you know what I mean? Uh, I know we have a ministry, Word of God study ministry. But. So Timotheus uh, three two and sent Timotheus our brother and minister of God. Timotheus was minister of God and our fellow laborer in the gospel of Christ. Um, Paul's minister here in, in 23. If ye continue in the faith grounded and settled and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel which ye have heard and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven, whereof I, Paul, am made a minister... Um, Apollos too. 15 here that I should be the minister of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles um, but I think it says ministration for us too yeah ministration uh, do you think, do you think uh, he was called a minister because he saw Jesus no he ministers the gospel oh. administration he has given to us the ministry of reconciliation. That's the one. Got you. So Got minister you. does a ministry. Right. I get it. Into the Paul's put into the ministry here in 12. Uh, and I thank Jesus Christ Jesus our Lord who hath enabled me for that he counteth me faithful, putting me into the ministry. Um Colossians 4 17 and say to our Archippus, take heed to the ministry which thou hast received in the Lord, that thou fulfill it. Um, giving no offense in anything, that the ministry be not blamed. All things are of God, um, who hath reconciled unto us by, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given up to us the ministry of reconciliation. 
Oh yeah, what was was my cousin? He's a he is ordained a minister, so he can ma marry people. He didn't show me his card yesterday. <laughs> yeah, so don't have a card. I, don't have a card. I was like, oh, yeah. okay. That's what. That's a great business. Yeah, so I was thinking, ah, it's only for business that. Interesting in Hebrews though, because in the Old Testament they um they sprinkled the blood over the, the you know their things you know uh, for their purification and that thing, saying this is the blood. But the New Testament say, saying this is the blood of the testament which God hath enjoined unto you. Moreover, He sprinkled with blood both the tabernacle and all the vessels of the ministry. So you know we're uh, Jesus Christ's blood, you know, um, on us or for us. Vessels of the ministry. So what what is ministering? Is it like serving? I guess that you're doing yeah. a service. They talk about uh, waiting tables or waiting tables, but ministering food or something was it? And they wanted to in, in the early book of Acts, they wanted to uh, choose brethren to minister the the food. I think so that the they, the rest could go preach the gospel. Daily ministering. Wrong. And I know that the Netherlands has a lot of ministers, you know, in politics. It's like they they serve their voters, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, we have ministers here too, yeah. And, and uh, in politics here. Right. So it's like they serve, right? Yeah. Yeah. And the uh, women they were they were washing people's feet and this one here I was thinking of and in those days when the number of the disciples was multiplied, there arose a murmuring of the Grecians against the Hebrews because their widows were neglected in the daily ministration. Uh, then the twelve called the multitude of the disciples unto them and said, It is not reason that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. So I think their daily ministration was uh um, hmm. their thing about serving tables, right? So they're they're serving, yeah. <laughs> There's no new thing, man. <laughs> Everything it's just copy paste over and over for thousands of years. Serving tables, I did that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's um, men can call themselves anything, you know, but and there are titles like legitimate titles out there, like a uh, minister of finance or something, a parliament person um a, a politician or a elected official or something like that but um for the word of god though like for the church i mean yeah we're i think we're all ministers of, of the gospel like as preachers not uh not with a card or something like that that was licensed as part of like a business or some corporation or some something like they do Attending to someone need someone's needs. Yeah. Hmm. All right, well, people need the gospel. Amen. That's what the minister, that's what minister definition. Well, I mean, Google says so. Yeah, yeah, that's what I that's what I was asking. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's what Google says a minister is. Acts six one. It's the daily ministration, and they were they were serving tables. So I think it's you're serving, you're giving. Serving, serving is ministering. No. And Paul went to minister the, the churches, so you know they needed him. Hey, brother, I'm going to step away for a little bit. My wife just got home, so I'm going to go say hi to her and stuff. I can leave the study going, right? Because every, everybody has access to the the controls. Yep. Okay, perfect. Hope they'll be back in a little bit there. Yes, sir. Hey, Godspeed, Ben. Godspeed. Godspeed. I don't know what to eat for breakfast. You don't have any any of those um spam rolls with the rice with the, with the you know what i just was thinking that brothers don't go back to the old school style can spam 
Good. Thought maybe you had threw a couple in the, in the fridge ahead. I should catch him, Patrick. He's uh he's doing good. Yeah, he's acclimating and uh, just kind of in the background, uh, making all the sounds that cats do. <laughs> oh, I thought I thought you had a dog. You have a cat and a dog. I got a cat a couple of days ago. Yep, add to the animal kingdom. <laughs> wow. Yep. Your dog. Yeah, your dog don't. Your dog don't get crazy. Uh, they haven't so far. They're only the two that I had that I got in Atlanta before I left. They were there. They just turned a year. So one is okay. One is a little like. She don't really know. Um, right. I think it'll be okay though. The the puppy, he's they they play together. It's not a big deal, but um, it's to hopefully have him as like a mouser, where he can go out and you know get some of these mice. This you know because I'm like man, I've just been praying about my garden. Um, yeah. There's some 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 bucket traps you can do where you uh, basically put a wire at the top of the bucket, you put a hole through a can and you put the wire, you put the wire through the can and it kind of like rolls and then you just put peanut butter on it and then you make a ramp for them to get up to it. Yeah. And you put water and you in, just the bucket, in the bucket huh? and they, they just drown. So that's really popular, popular up there. They actually have it uh, pre-made where you can get them like that. Um, and then yeah. I just feed them to the birds or whatever, but, uh, it's definitely, it, it feels like a, like a pandemic, not a pandemic, but, um, uh, they multiply, multiply really quick. Um, they, ride, they do. It's, it's just like, man, the, the, the girls have brought me little dead baby mice in their mouths before. I'm like, where did you even get this from? But they burrow in the ground and live so in the, the ground. Yeah. The whole area that I'm working on, it'll it'll be a work of progress. Um, like I'll have probably maybe fifty to a hundred containers. Um, I have about maybe forty now um, because I, you know, I do part container gardening too. I like to grow some tomatoes and uh, cucumbers and um, mainly uh, tomatoes and peppers. I do in buckets and containers and stuff. Um, so it'll be a good portion of them. And they can't climb up the sides of those. And they're not like voles or gophers where they can, you know, they'll go through dirt. The holes that I make in the buckets are big enough for mice to go through them. But they don't, they don't um, typically, which I'm, I'm not familiar with field mice, mountain mice. Um, they won't go like dig up the bucket and actually go through the, you know, container. Because I'll have them elevated off the ground, like on pallets or whatever. So that water water won't stop up underneath it so i usually always put it on something um so the containers i feel like will be okay but these beds like i just got i just got some logs um so like uh you know how they cut down trees and they have like the sides with the with the bark they usually don't use that for anything so um a guy that cuts wood i just got it from him I have 30, 30 foot pieces, eight feet, like all different types of pieces. I'm going to be working on that today. So I'm just building beds out of like old side, like log sides. So it's, it, that'll be cool. So that'll be like my raised bed situation. I have a couple other kind of like makeshift things I'm doing. Um, so if I want to come back to it, like I can just, you know, um, so yeah, it's just it's just you know planning. So I'm 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 doing combination. I'll have some wicking you know, wicking containers. Uh, I feel like I'm rambling, but I have a couple of uh, earth beds where it's like directly just on the ground. But I'm like, man, Lord, please give me the wisdom, Holy Spirit. Like, you know, how can I? Because I'll 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 fight everything else. The birds won't be able to get in because I'll have it you know completely enclosed. Um, but it's just the critters that can get beyond. Um, so, and it's really just the mice. So the mice, I'm just trying to be, I don't want to do anything poison, anything chemical. I've gotten these ultrasonic 
um, that let out like a um, like a ultrasonic thing that only the mice can hear. So I have my seedlings in my shed in my in the building that will become my office or tiny home or whatever I decide to put it do. So all my seedlings are in there and they haven't touched any of that because of the ultrasonic uh, frequency wave th thing that's in that. And it covers 1200 square feet, apparently. So I don't know. I could get those two and kind of just prop them up all around. They're like they're like 70 bucks each. Um, and they last like up to a year. But uh, yeah, just trying to do a whole bunch of, you know, stuff that could be preventative. But. I just am like, I'm already kind of anticipating a little bit of failure just because this is my first year growing in this climate, but I don't want to be completely devastated, you know, and the, uh, the bush, the, um, like the, the, the beds just for flowers and stuff that I'm making, they've even come through those and like eaten down. <laughs> it's crazy. Like they, I mean, I don't know if y'all know what hostas are, but um, they're kind of like shade loving, kind of look a little tropically. I had like three of those. They ate those down to the nub. Uh, they're mm -hmm. starting to eat on some of my uh, just regular shrub bushes that I wouldn't think that they would eat, you know? And so, I mean, that's money wasted. So I got to, I kind of just got to find some, some things that are going to just keep them out. The fencing will keep the cows out. You know, and hopefully the coyotes too. Um, so yeah, just been. I mean, in, in Georgia, I grew, I grow eighty percent of my food. So, you know, I've kind of been very detached from that, trying to get situated here, and I've been eating out a lot. I have, you know, my diet has changed because I'm trying to get my garden set up. Yeah. So, you know, it's just, it's just different. You know, of course, now I can actually plant fruit trees and stuff like that. Cause it's my own land. Uh, whereas before I was renting. Um, so that'll, that'll be cool to ha have fruit and stuff like that, but I still want to, you know, it's just all, it's just learning curves, man. And, you know, if I, if I have to grow in like all containers, like have like a full container gardening, I'll do that. If it means it's going to be my food, you know, so. What do you think, Kurt? I was gonna, just going to say, like, your little spot is probably the only food they can get, really. Uh-huh. <laughs> exactly. So it's like, well, <laughs> let's go to the party. Exactly. Exactly. We, we might need to run a few miles to get some more food. So it's like, well, we uh -huh. can just stay here. Yeah. And then usually you always grow a little bit more for, you know, the birds and stuff um, like in Georgia, but the birds weren't really as bad. But these crows, man, these crows get as big as eagles out here. It's it's, it's crazy. Yeah, I seen those buggers in Arizona. Yeah, they're big. Yeah. Man, they are massive. They they actually can fight with the eagles. They and stuff. follow you. Yeah, they follow you. Yeah, those birds don't have food or something. It's crazy. If so you get food on your backpack, they're gonna follow you all everywhere you go. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah, I've actually driven by other people's properties and they like their little garden areas. You know, they're like out there munching on stuff. Like four or five or six of them just going through oh. their. Yeah, it's crazy. You know what? You know what they do, bro. I've seen them. You know the um the ranchers. Mm -hmm. You know when the um the female cat the mama cat cow giving birth. Mm hmm. Yeah, I they, saw that. They start eating them be while they're giving birth, bro. So the baby get born, they and all the eyes too. and tongue and all, and, that. and all that. Yeah. So sad, bro. So sad. Yeah, they're vicious. Very they're vicious. vicious. Yeah, and that's why the, the ranchers they shoot them, those crows. Yeah, that is sad because they can go ahead and kill them. And by the time they. What about snakes? Are there snakes out there? There are snakes. Yep. For oh, sure. Oh, man. I can't rattle? imagine that. Rattlesnakes, vipers. Uh, rattle is probably the most popular. So oh. definitely rattlesnakes. Oh, yeah. bro. Um, I'm people, good. <laughs> people, I don't need rattlesnakes. Go. people rattle rattlesnake hunt out here and eat them. It's actually, actually a thing they do. 
Um, you have good snakes, you have bad snakes. You have snakes that that'll eat the mice. Like, man, I need y'all to come in. But one one rattlesnake bite can kill a dog. So I just um, you've been praying about that too. So it's just you know all new. That's what, that's what it's off off grid life is about. But my garden is important. I want to definitely be able to grow. I, I got to be able to grow food. So, you know, uh, over time, I'll have whatever I need in place to make sure nothing gets in. So I've never had to completely enclose a, um, a garden before. I've always, you know, I mean, I've just left it open. But here, the mm-hmm. birds, the crows, like, they all just come through and decimate. So... It'll be literally enclosed where you just walk in it and, you know, nothing can get into it. And I've even been thinking about maybe putting like a three foot section at the, the, at the base of the fencing that I'll, I'll build to kind of keep them out. But you kind of got to extend it beyond the fence because they'll, they can, some, some critters can burrow under. So it's just, you know, I mean, I can't blame them, you know, but so we'll see did you did you did you guys lose your dog i forgot um what happened bro no i was asking i was asking kurt about his dog that they used to have i think he i think he passed or he may be still alive i just haven't seen him Oh yeah, yeah. I know he has that cat. You know, back in the days, I used to go. Uh, my grandpa and my dad and my uncle—they all legendary pig hunters. So from a young boy, from a young baby boy, I was a pig hunter all the way to a high school and a little bit after. We used to hunt them with dogs, and then we stab them with a the knife. But um, what I was trying to bring up was that we used to use this horn. It's a bull horn. And we used to use that horn to blow the dogs back. So say they gone for a long time and you and you know that you probably lost. What we do is we blow that horn and they come back. And we never oh. lo- we never did lose on dog. They can associate the sound like where you're at. Yeah, so we always nowadays, now the generation today, they use tracking collars and they use zappers. So they zap the dog and as dog turn around and come back somehow. But um, they have tracking collars on them. We have never used that back in the old days. Mm. Yeah. So that horn, my grandpa, our hunting name was the Posse. And we was the only hunters in Hawaii who had that horn that would call their dogs back. Wow. Hunters used to blow their mind when they hear about that. And they still do. It's crazy. I'll, sh- I'll show you the horn. I, I-, I have it. I was the one left with it. Oh wow! Yeah, I still have it. Yeah. Sometimes why did, I y'all, go why did y'all stop? Huh. Well, um, we had some. Uh, my grandpa was getting old and was just getting carried away. Um, there was a one incident where we I wasn't there. My dad wasn't there, but I had my uncles and my grandpa. So they went, they went crack the dogs loose from the truck. The dogs went run inside the mountain. And just so happened, had somebody else's hunting dog was in the mountain. They went chase. This is right in the beginning, too, of the hunt. They went chase the dog all the way out the mountain. And the dog went end up in somebody's garage. And then our dogs ended up killing their that dog in that person's garage mm. and was um after after that my grandpa they was going to sue my grandpa the the owner of the house mm-hmm. and then after that my grandpa said he's done oh, wow. and then that was it and then i end up i ended up getting a couple of the dogs i ended up having my own hunting strain my own hunting team with some of the posse but um, I ended up giving it all to my cousin. 
Because the pig, how, the pig epidemic is uh is is it as bad as it is on the big island? Yeah, everywhere, all the islands, they the pigs they're just multiplying and not as much hunters like before. Back in my my when I was younger, there was hunters everywhere. Oh wow! No, everybody playing Fortnite. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So the pigs just multiply like rabbits in the mountains. Wow, that's crazy. And that's why that's why people eat so much pork. Yeah, that's why people make a lot of smoked meat. Well, I'm about to get to my bed. I don't know what happened to Kurt. Um, and I'll probably go ahead and end it. Yeah. And then Lord willing, I'll see you tomorrow. Yeah, I'll probably see you guys tomorrow. And right. you guys have a blessed day. You too. Godspeed. Enjoy your Sunday. You too, man. Take care.